Hello, and welcome to our Explanation of Cultural Studies, a theory by Stuart Hall that looks into mass media's power to function in society, and ultimately argues that those in power control what is shown in the media in order to manufacture consent for dominant ideologies that viewers then buy into. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. You're using a lot of words, but I don't understand how this whole manufacturing thing really works. Okay, okay, I hear you. I think to demonstrate this better, we need to look at how it all goes down in this fictional society called Yeti Land. Ladies and gentlemen of Yeti Land, I am George Farquaad and I have risen to power to become your next dictator. Whether you like it or not, I am here to stay. Have plans to overthrow me? Think again. My castle is guarded by a fire-breathing dragon. My supporting cast is too strong. There is nothing you can do. I control the media. I have access to everything. Your calls, texts, DMs, you name it, I got it. Don't think about posting anything unfavorable of me I will see it. It will not end up well for you. I am all powerful and you are nothing. Good luck to anyone who tries. Oh, another day laboring for dictator George. Uh, this is so much work. This isn't even a good day for farming. Uh, coming home from another day of laboring as a peasant. I wonder what's on TV. Bananas, strawberries, cinnamon twists. Only three of the numerous new items at my new lane dining hall. In Yeti Land, of course. Not only are they tasty, but also nutritious. My team and I have been working diligently, not for me, not for them, but for you, the people of Yeti Land. We have developed a new technology, one never seen before, something so unprecedented, you will just have to see for yourself. Eat my food, turn invisible. It's really as simple as that. Don't believe me? Why don't you see for yourself? And just like that, I'm invisible. Want to be like me, the all-powerful and mighty George Farquaad? Then come down to Lane Dining Hall and get your hands on this new delicious food. Huh, you know, I think that's true. In fact, if that isn't the absolute and objective truth about the society I live in, then I don't know what is. This response to George's commercial would be an example of the obstinate audience operating within a dominant code. In this code, the audience consumes and accepts the ideology presented by the media, or in this case, George's commercial. Okay, okay, I'm starting to see how media manufacture consent. But when do we start talking codes? Well, hold on over there. This is just one of three decoding options that Stuart Hall outlines for us. A decoding option is basically just a way that the audience can respond to the ideology they are being presented in the mass media. Hey, Peasant Annette, how are you? I'm good, Peasant Grace, how are you? I'm pretty good. So, I did see a new commercial on TV with Dictator George in it. Did you see that? Oh my gosh, I saw that, and it's total wackiness. Like. That's not even possible that you could eat a banana and then become invisible. How is that even a thing? Peasant Annette used the oppositional code, which means that she saw through what Dictator George was trying to do, which was to gain more power by making his people believe that if they ate bananas, they'd become invisible. He was just trying to, you know, boost the economy and sell more bananas. Crazy, a little bit out there, but there was some sense to it. I mean, bananas are good for you. They could give you stronger powers, maybe just not make you invisible. The more I think about it, the crazier it is. How could you just become invisible after eating a banana? Dictator George, he's a wacko. Whoa, I don't know where all this is coming from, Annette. Like, you seem really.
really upset about this, but I think we should compromise on it and take some parts of it and leave the other ones, you know? There's some truth to it. No. Okay, I guess we'll disagree. Cousin Grace used a negotiable code when she was watching the advertisement from Dictator George. She agreed for the most part that bananas were good for your health and that they could give you better health and more power, but she didn't necessarily agree with the part that said you turned invisible. She did think that bananas were good for you, but she also realized that George was probably just saying it to make us peasants buy more bananas to get him more money and more power. So on one hand, she agreed with some of it. On the other part, she didn't agree with the invisible part. Oh, um, no matter how much we try, we just cannot overthrow dictator George because we just like bananas too much. We really do. People live off of them. We could never convince them to stop eating them. They eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Yeah, she just has way too much power over us. And because we live off of bananas, we have no other choice but to live under Dictator George. We really don't. This idea that we have to eat bananas that Dictator George tells us is just too powerful and strong. We can't overcome it. Even the media. Every time you turn on the TV, there's Dictator George's face. You walk down the street, there's Dictator George on the posters. We fall for it a lot of the time because it makes us buy more bananas. And we love bananas. Yeah, way too much. I think so. Thanks, Yeti Land, for that informative demonstration. So let's talk key terms. Hegemony is the sway of the haves over the have-nots. Yes, and in this scenario, in this world of the peasants, George's idea, the dominant ideology that bananas are the best food for you and the only food you should eat, has an overarching power over the whole community. And let's dive even deeper into that term, dominant ideology. An ideology is a mental framework for organizing reality. If it's a dominant ideology, it's considered to be the norm in that society. So in Yeti land, the dominant ideology was to buy and eat more bananas and lean food in general. Cultural study theorists would seek to unmask that ideology and how it is actually keeping those in power rich and those without power poor. Stuart Hall was the theorist behind cultural studies, and we wanted to see it between both social science and what people do in their lives, construct in their daily lives. Claire Alexander takes a look at Stuart Hall in his early life, so she takes a look at his race. She then goes along and shows how his early life and his dealings with the people around him shaped his view and goes along with the theory that he ends up creating, cultural studies. Go this article goes through both his personal life and the lives of other theorists that end up making cultural studies what we know and what we study today. According to Brennan Wood, Stuart Hall's uh, idea of hegemony is a bit flawed because what he ends up doing is placing cultural ideology and state politics into their own separate boxes and that they don't really affect each other in any way. Um, multiple scholars have debated with him about um, his ambiguous claims about the state's role in hegemony as well as um, keeping cultural ideologies not directly with state not directly related to state politics into a box. So Brennan Wood comes up with the idea that um, sociology should be brought into the mix in order to ha have a better view of social life and have a more general view of how cultural culture and state politics affect each other and not just like in a cri in a crisis which Hall based his uh, example on. <laughs> 